have to add like tiles and descriptions and everything. I can change yeah. the background colors and images and, and graphics. But I'm just going to say generate this for me, please. Um, and then uh, I'm, not, I'm just going to create the installable package like this. Click generate. It's going to take probably less than 10 seconds for this thing to finish. It's generating right now. And three, two, one, and bam. That would have oh, been so that cool. Been great. That, that would have been, been great. Easy. Yeah. No, so. Let me try. Cute. Three, two, one. Huh. Oh, yeah, it just ah. finished. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Pretty much got it. OK. So now we can come back here to the installable package. And then uh, we want the source code for this. Where's the source code? Right here. So I click on source code. Wait, go back to installable oh. packages, my favorite feature. See the QR code? I can scan that with my phone, and it just installs it on my phone. Yes. Love yes, it. you can do this. I'm going to show it in the emulator here. There you go. So you can see how I can download the source code. I'm going to say download source code, save. Save as. I'm going to go put this on my desktop. I had a folder for the, uh, whoops, desktop, MVA Cortana, and I'll call it App Studio. Little demo here. Save this here. Okay, open the folder. I don't like messages in Visual Studio, so I like to unblock the file before I unzip it. And now let's extract everything. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna simply come here. I go launch the solution. Hey, I got a nice Visual Studio solution that was created for me. It's awesome. So App Studio, of course, goes beyond like so many features. But the cool thing here is that it does enable uh, text to speech directly in here. So, for example, I have the Windows version, the Windows Phone. First thing you do is you do a rebuild. This way, all the NuGet packages are refreshed and downloaded for you. So you do a full rebuild. And, and it's cool that it gives you all that code. I actually um, like to use this as just a way to um, show a, some good design patterns and a way to kind of reverse engineer this code and learn oh, yes. how it works. The tool itself may be for beginners, but the, um, the code that's in there is definitely for more advanced users. Yeah. Because it, it can be actually quite advanced. It uses MVVM, uh, commanding interface. It uses uh, inversion of control for everything. And it's a good um, separation also between uh, data code, shared code between Windows and Windows Phone, and also specific code to each platform. So yeah. it's a good, good way to learn basically how to structure a good universal app. And there's nothing to say that you couldn't go significantly contribute to this project and then publish it that way. So you start with whatever App Studio gives you, and then you could go add oh, yes. on. Yeah, it's definitely it's a good starting point. You can either expand the project from there with your own skills and then build a better application if you want, or you can also, if you're building something else, you can go and just rip out some code out of this. Like, there's a YouTube player in this. So if you don't know how to integrate a YouTube player in your app, just go take the one from App Studio and you can use it. So let me just run this, for example, on my local machine so you can see the Windows version. Sample Windows Phone, blah, blah, blah. So this is Windows Dev Info. We can see all the news, including Windows 10 is coming to Raspberry read, read Pi. Read that one. So let's read that one. And then uh, we can close the, whoop, sorry, let's, let's stay here. And then if I right click, whoop, that's the go to source. I'm looking read for more. the, sorry. Read more. Read more, just under the paragraph. Uh, read more is going to open the browser. Ah. Yeah. I'm trying to see where the text-to-speech integration. I think I have to launch the Windows Phone version for this. So let me try that. So let me just stop this here. Let me switch. Did you know you could do this? You can go start up right here and change Yeah, you know here. what else you can do is I like to right-click on the solution and go to the startup options and tell it whichever project I have highlighted, that's the one I want you to run. Oh, OK. I didn't know that one. Yeah, that one. Very that's pretty cool. So I'm launching it directly in emulator, which was not running. So I have to wait oh, for this to load. Well, yeah. No, actually, it's, these machines are quite fast. It's it's quite surprising, and our emulator is is quite good. Yeah. Unlike a certain emulator on another platform, <laughs> which moves at the con the speed of continental drift. So now I can click on Windows 10 right here. I write and I can tap this, and there you go. I got a read button. Let me just crank up the volume. This. And then, let me make sure that audio is going to come out. I click read. This blog was written by Kevin Dallas, there you go. This, general manager, it, it's Windows the IoT right Group. So you see Today, how the Raspberry in just a few minutes, I was able to create the retail a brand new app their new board, with the App Raspberry Studio Pi with speech built in. We so there's no the easier way. I especially like your sample logo. Yes. <laughs> 
yeah, you should definitely add your own images in there. App Studio makes it easy. It tells you exactly what the, the image sizes are and how to integrate them. So yeah, it's a great way to get started. So there you go. So advanced feature, but not so advanced because anybody can do it. You, can, you guys can do it at home right now if you want. At go home. ahead, we'll or, wait. Or at work, right. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are at work. Um, so next up, dealing with device screen timeouts. So these devices, of course, for the sake of preserving battery, they, they naturally have a screen that eventually times out. So that means that after a few minutes, you can configure this yourself, but it's not a good idea to leave the screen on all the time. It will just drain your battery. And most users, of course, by default, I think a phone is going to be a minute or three minutes. I know mine is set to three, but by I default, it's one. It's, by default, it's one minute. I set mine to three because I thought one was a little too short. Um, <clears throat> and I get great battery life on my 1520 anyways. So what that means is if the screen times out, whatever interaction you were having in the app is going to be interrupted. Whatever audio was being played back is going to be interrupted. So we've already seen a little demo earlier how on the Windows version of my custom audiobooks, I was able to play audio in the background by using the background media capable of the media element. On Windows Phone, we would actually have to create a, a full background uh, audio agent, which is a little more involved, not super complicated, but a little more involved. So I figured here one good alternative is to basically let the app stay up. Sometimes, uh, especially in a custom audiobook, if you're just going to read a book in the background, you can easily go to another app and everything, it's fine. But let's say your app requires interaction. Let's say the app asks you a question and you return. Like, for example, that game we're playing in the dungeon, crawling and giving commands, go north, go left, kill the troll and everything. Um, if you play this in your car, after three minutes, the screen times out and you can't play anymore. Now you just force the user to pick up the phone, maybe when they shouldn't. So a good approach is to basically make sure that the phone doesn't basically time out. Uh, Windows Phone Silverlight apps have a, a model where they can actually run under the lock screen. But that model is kind of gone. It's, it's not exactly a best practice. It was there, it was possible, but it's not exactly something you want to be doing anyways. It's better to, to, for the user to really know if the app is running or not. So how do you prevent screen timeouts? You prevent screen timeout when, the, uh, when your app is running. So first of all, don't automatically just prevent a screen timeout. Again, this is something you should ask the user because it will have an impact on their battery. If the screen stays up and they forget about it and they just put the phone down and they come back an hour later and the phone is dead because the, the, the app was running and it was in the foreground, uh, they won't be happy. You know what they're going to do? They're going to uninstall your app and they're going to go to the store and then they're going to one star your app into oblivion and other users will read it. So that's what they're going to do. So ask them if it's OK. Uh, provide a toggle so that even if they opted in, they can opt out later. And to make sure that the app is actually not going to time out, it's actually quite simple. You simply look uh, here on screen. We can see that you call in the windows.system.display. There's a class called display request. And you simply call the request active method whenever you need the app to stay in the foreground. And then when you're done, what you should do is, of course, called request release on the display request class. This way, uh, you're basically telling the system, I'm good, I'm done with whatever I had to do, so you can go back to the regular timeout. So it's going to reset the, the, the count. So it's three minutes, it's going to start the count to three minutes from there. Of course, this is not like a safe way out. Your app can still be suspended. There is nothing that prevents the user from just clicking the lock screen, the, the button to basically close the phone. So, and turn off the screen. Um, you have to deal with that. So do not assume that the app is always going to be up. So let me just show you a very quick demo of this. Um, in all fairness, I will not be waiting for the timeout because that would be one of the most boring demos ever. <laughs> I'm just going to show you where I integrated the code. So what I did is, remember how the Windows version ha supported background audio, but the Windows Phone version didn't. So I only integrated this in the Windows Phone version. And my Windows Phone version, if you remember correctly for the custom audio app, basically has <coughs> the main list of the books that are available. But if the user is simply on the list of books, chances are this is not a point where the screen needs to stay up. The screen only needs to stay up when the user is actually reading a book 
or having the book read out loud to them. So what I did is I went to the item page, and this is where I've integrated the code to do this. So it's very simple, couple tricks. First of all, um, your display request, make sure that it's a global class level object. Because if you make it more of a method level object, as soon as that method is over, that object is going to get garbage collected, and Windows is and Windows Phone are smart enough to realize that if a display request gets garbage collected, then whatever request was active is now released, and therefore the screen will time out. By making it class level, as long as that page is up, then it will not get garbage collected, and it's going to be up to you to have the request active and release. So I have my display request has been created here. This is all part of the <coughs> Windows the graphics display. And then when I scroll uh, down here, you'll notice that I have, whoops, let me just find my proper events. <coughs> uh, ta -ta, let me take a look back here. There we go, load state, control, navigation. Oh, there we go, Na navigation, registration. There we go. I've got the unnavigated to and the unnavigated from. So when I navigate to this page, this is when I initialize my display request. And this is where I request for it to be active. So now at this point, when the page is up, whether the page is just up or it's reading or anything, as long as it stays active, the screen will not time out. And then on navigated from, being a good citizen here, I make sure the display request is not null. And in that case, I request a release of the display, meaning now I no longer need exclusive access to keep it from time, timing out, and it's done. So this source code is gonna be available. You can test it yourself. I'm not gonna be testing this, but trust me, it works. And uh, this is a proper way of doing it. And this way you can have an app that will stay up as long as the user doesn't lock the screen manually or turn off the device manually, um, it won't time out. So if you do any kind of interaction with speech, with audio, or anything, it's not just for speech scenarios, but make sure that you only do this when it's really relevant to do so. If it's an app that the user will necessarily be interacting with it a lot by using the screen and tapping on it, well, in that case, you don't need to do it because every time you touch the screen, it resets the timer oh, for the timeout. So be mindful of when you use this. This is, again, like a, uh, a tool that should be used with great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. We've heard that one before, right? Um, okay. Next up is how we can pair speech synthesis with the recognition and translation. In this module, we've already, in this uh, demo, what we are going to show you is basically how you can create your own implementation of the Bing Translate demo. So I simply, uh, what I'm doing here is using the Bing Translate API. So the Bing Translate API is, a, is an open API that anybody can use. Um, it supports state-of-the-art statistical machine translation systems that are like, way more advanced than I could ever write in my life. Um, it does support over 40 languages that are supported. And then the cool thing also is that you only need to give it the destination language you want to go to. If you simply pass a string of, of text, it will detect the language of origin of that text. So I don't have to say go from English to French. I can just say go to French and then pass a string in German or in English or in anything and we'll do the, the translation. So if you want to learn more about this, you can go to bing.com slash dev slash translator. <coughs> uh, it is a paid service. So it's a service that's part of the Azure uh, marketplace. So, uh, but the good news is that there is a free tier that you can use for this, and that's what I'm using right now, the free tier. And it's the a pretty big tier. It's some tens of thousands of hits. It, it's two million characters per month. There you go. So you can translate a lot of stuff. So, so don't pass entire books to it, you know, to be translated. But it's, unless you want to um, pay for it. Unless you want to pay for it, and they'll gladly accept it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so definitely you can use this. And uh, the cool thing is then from your app, you simply make simple HTTP REST uh, API calls uh, to use it. So this is how the translator looks. If we look at the, uh, the sequence here, the way that it works is, first of all, you have to get an Azure data market token for Bing Translate. And then uh, once this is done, you capture the user input either via text or, of course, in this case, via speech recognition. Then you can show or both or tell the user what was heard using text-to-speech. Then you pass <coughs> the text over to Bing Translate to translate it. And then finally, you take the translation and then you show it to the user and you can play it back using the new language 
using speech synthesis. So pretty cool demo. Let's look at it. Okay, so let's come here to Bing Translate. So this demo, you'll notice it's a universal app, but of course, uh, right now, the Windows portion of the demo is purely translation. There's no speech integration. The speech integration is only in the Windows phone portion of it. So let me just quickly uh, show you how it works. <coughs> so I'm gonna unlock my phone and make sure that, is this, no, that's emulator, so I don't need this. Make sure that this is running. There you go. Project my screen, F, this is good. And now I'm gonna deploy to a device. <coughs> so let's project this on screen here. So this is a very simple UI. Um, and I made it so that it's kind of a manual process at the bottom. You could automate this so one chains automatically into another. So at the top here, I have some text. I can clear this. And using the, rec the regular recognition UI, I can start and then say, Good evening, I would like to order the chicken and a bottle of wine. Did you say good evening, I would like to order the chicken and a bottle of wine? Yeah, so it's not exactly in a bottle of wine. I'm going to clear that. 